these three equations, and I want you to think, what would it do to get x by itself? And I want you to especially think, why would I do that? All right, think about that for a second. Okay, in all of these, we're going to do the exact same kind of thing. What we do exactly, exactly is going to be different, but we're going to do the same kind of thing uh, because of this. If I have an x, and I add something to x, and I take that exact same thing back, I'm right back at x, right? The concept we're using here is that 5 minus 5 is 0, right? So to add 5 to x, and then to subtract 5 from that, this is x plus 5. Because if I added 5, that's where I would be, x plus 5, 5 to the right of x. Um, and I subtract 5 from that, I will be back at x. Okay. It's really important to understand the why of what we do, why we do the things we do. Okay. So why I subtract 6 here is not because 6 and 6 cancel, or 6 and negative 6 cancel. I hate, I absolutely hate this phrase. Because it, it means so many different things. Uh, it's just very not specific. It can be very confusing. Cancel out could mean that plus 6 and minus 6 are 0, that 5 divided by 5 is 1, that the square root of the square is uh, is just the number itself. Uh, cancel out is just so vague, right? I don't like that at all. I use it because everybody uses it, but I really hate it. What, in this case, what cancel means is that when I add something to x and then I take it away, I have nothing, right? Nothing added to x. Of course, we have an equation. We need to do the same thing to both sides, otherwise the scale is going to get all off balance, right? So we do the same thing to both sides, and we find that x is equal to 8, okay? Here, the idea is no different. I've added something. I've added something to x, right? But I don't want to have something added to x. I want to have just x. So I will take that thing away, right? In this case, we added y instead of 5, so we're at x plus y here, and so we'll take away y, and we'll be back at x. And when we take away y from the other side, we have x equals whatever 3 minus y is. Here, we added something to x. What have we added to x? We've added 5q to x. So we're going to take 5q away from x plus 5q. I've added something to x. I'm going to take that thing back. I'm right back at x. I'll do the same thing to both sides. I've run out of room, so I'm going to write it over here. x equals m minus 5q. Right. Here is a silly example. x plus a cactus equals an apple pie. Okay. I have no idea why x plus a cactus would be an apple pie, but whatever x is, if I want to figure out what it is, then I need to take that cactus away from x, right? I've added a cactus. I've taken a cactus away. I just have x left. So when I subtract a cactus from the right side, right, x must be whatever an apple pie minus a cactus is. If you ever figure out how to take a cactus away from an apple pie, you'll know what x is, okay? And it all relies on 5 minus 5 is 0. Uh, y minus y is 0. Uh, 5q minus 5q is 0. Anything, anything minus that same thing is nothing, okay? And that's what we like to have, x plus nothing, all right? The reason I go through all this is because it's important for you to understand Okay, if you understand that taking 6 away from 6 means that you have nothing added to x, then it makes just as much sense when you have to subtract my y, it makes just as much sense when you subtract 5q, because I don't want anything added on x, 
is x term by itself. So I will subtract 4y because I've taken this. You can just just kind of forget about it. Cross your eyes and make it blurry and forget what, exactly what it looks like because what I know is that I've added something to it and I do not want that thing added on to it. So I'll take that thing away. Right? So sense if we really understood that when we take something away from something there's nothing all right um, let's take a look at these equations this is the one that's just a little bit more tricky uh, that people have more trouble with um, so 5x equals 35 2x equals 6 bx equals r 7xy equals t we're using the exact same idea in all of these just like we use the exact same idea these equations. What you would do, not just why you, not just like what you would do, you know, what you're supposed to do, but why you're doing it. Okay. So, you may know that we're going to divide by 5 here, but I want us to understand why we're going to divide by 5. Alright? And if you ignore this, you tune it out, then you're going to be just as confused as you are right now. Um, so, don't do that. Don't tune it out. Here is why we divide by 5. Okay. First thing I have to do is explain or remind you how we multiply fractions. So if we have a over b times c over d, that makes ac over bd, right? Because we multiply stra fractions straight across. Right? It'd be great if you understood why we multiply straight across, right? other than just I, I know that's what I'm supposed to do. But uh, I won't explain that right now. Um, Feel free to ask me, and I'll explain to you again, right? Because we talked about this at the beginning of the year, why we multiply straight across. But anyway, so now let's say we have a fraction. Say we started with this fraction. We could split it back apart into these two fractions, right? Because if we multiply these together, we get this. Okay, let's do that over here. Uh, let's see why. We can just put a line through. If you just put a line through things, man. You're gonna hurting real bad when we talk about things like this and why you cannot just cancel this x squared with this x squared. You cannot just draw a line through it because they look the same, okay? What we need to understand is what I'm about to say, all right? The reason why 5 cancels with 5 is because it is possible to rewrite this fraction a lot like I was talking about over here. So I'm going to rewrite this fraction as, uh, I didn't get myself in here, I'm going to rewrite this fraction as 5 over 5 times x over, think for a second what you think would go here, right? I'm splitting about this fraction into two fractions, a lot of people think that I would put a 5 here, but no, because these two fractions have to multiply to this one fraction, the numerator is 5 times x, denominator is 5. So this would have to be a 1 for this times that to be 5. Okay. 35 divided by 5 would be done the same thing to both sides. This is 7. Okay. Now, I've split apart this fraction into two fractions, and here's the reason why this can be done as a shorter form of this. Right? I don't write this every time I do one of these problems because I get it. I understand why this can be done. So I don't make those kinds of mistakes in another kind of situation. Um, I know that this could be rewritten as 5 over 5 times x over 1, and that 5 divided by 5 is 1. And so now what do I have back? 1 times x over 1. What's x over 1? x divided by 1. Well, anything divided by 1 is just itself. So what we have here is essentially just an x. Right? x 
cannot cancel these is because it is not possible to write this as x squared over x squared times some other fraction. That's completely for another day. But it's not possible to do what we did there with this fraction. Okay. Uh, let's talk about this guy here. Same idea. Something's being multiplied by x. Okay. So if I divide by point possible to write this as 0.2 over 0.2 times x over 1. If I multiply these together, I would get this exactly. 6 over 0.2 is 30. Okay. Uh, 0.2 divided by 0.2 is 1. x over 1 is x. So x, you know, all of this stuff is equal to x. So x is 30. Here, it's a little bit stranger looking, b times x. Uh, b times x equals r. If I want just x, then I'll need to divide it by b. I hear my rabbit or cat back there. Okay, why can't I just do this? Why? Because I can rewrite this as b over b times x over 1. b times x, b.
is zero. Uh, and the other concept, the second concept, is that something divided by itself is one. So the only two things that we need to understand, right? We're going to move on to squares and square roots and uh, cubes and cube roots, canceling canceling things out that way. But for right now, all we have to understand is that when you take something away from itself, you have zero. You have nothing added. Something by itself, you just have a one. Okay? And if something is added to x, I want to take it back. If something is multiplied by x, I want to divide by that same thing. And if I understand that, that something divided by itself is one, then this idea is not a big deal. Like x over 7 equals 4, right? Then we really know what to do because we know that 7 divided by 7 is 1. How am I going to use that? Well, I already have the divided by 7. Right there it is, right there. I need the multiplied by 7, right? I, I'm not going to be able to get a 7 over 7. I'm not going to be able to rewrite this as 7 over 7 in any way if I add 7 or if I divide by 7. That's not going to be able to work. I'm going to need to multiply by 7 in order to get this 7 over 7, right? Just like we rewrote these fractions as 2 slightly different right now, but we can rewrite it in the same way. We can, I can kind of put these together and then split them back apart. Right, and we have 7 divided by 7 is 1. Uh, it's the same idea. We still have 7 divided by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and x divided by 1 is x, so we have x. And on this side, we would just need to do the same thing that we did over here, which is multiply by 7. A lot of you want to divide by 3 fourths. That absolutely is correct because this is now 3 fourths over 3 fourths times x over 1. Right? And 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths, anything divided by itself is 1, and so we have x. Right? I think it is a little bit easier to think about it instead of dividing by 3 fourths. Okay? To think instead, how will I get something divided by itself? Well, I, if I multiply this by 4 over 3, get 12 over 12, right? 12 over 12 times x. And so I would just have to do this. Multiply by 4 thirds. 12 over 12 is just 1, and again, I just have x. 1 times x. Right? I want 1 times x. I want x plus 0. And that is x by itself. Right? And on this side, we have We can do this cross-canceling, but the, the idea here is the same 12 times 4 over 3, 1 times 3, uh, x equals, now we split this back apart, and a 12 divided by 3 times 4 over 1, and now we have a proper division problem, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16. I know it takes more steps, but every step makes sense, right? That's what I love about this kind of stuff. When you take the time to write it out, sense, and eventually the, you, you still make sense, but you don't have to write it out anymore. And some years down the line, when you've forgotten how to solve this kind of an equation, uh, you'll be less likely to forget that something divided by itself is a 1, and to be able to, to come up with this all over again, all by yourself, okay? Those are the kinds of things that stick in your head better than, oh, I remember I'm supposed to divide by 6, I don't know why, uh, or if you ask me to explain why, uh, oh, it cancels out. cancels out in one case means if I subtract a number from itself, I get zero. In another sense, it means that a number divided by itself is one. Canceling out means completely different things in those two situations. So um, it, my hope would be that you would watch this video over and over and over until you know why you subtract something from both sides, why you divide on both sides, why you multiply both sides, why you multiply by the reciprocal on both sides.
add something and then take it away, zero. If you multiply by something and then divide by the same thing, you really have just done nothing. You've multiplied by one, really, or divided by one. Okay, I'll stop talking. Thank you for watching.